Oh, good afternoon. Here we are at the uh, Cumberland Mine Railroad. Uh, this is where we repair our freight cars at here in the yard. And you're looking at a uh, Westinghouse Mark 50 draft gear. This is the uh, kind of draft gear that we have in our uh, in our uh, hopper cars. We haul old coal here. That's a brand new one. It's uh, the Mark 50 is most commonly used for uh, heavy applications. We've got a bin full of knuckles and various couplers. Here's a draft gear that is uh, seen better days. It's seen better days. It's cracked up here on top. <coughs> Inside that uh, draft gear are springs. Actually, the same springs that are on the uh, truck sets on the wheels. I'll show you the springs that are in them. I set one out here for you. It's actually three springs. Big spring, middle size, and then a small one. They're all fit together there. So, okay. This is a, a uh, Westinghouse Mark 325 draft gear. It's uh, very heavy duty. Uh, there's spring in it too. It's uh, actually <coughs> AAR rated at 47,327 foot pounds. It's used for its real high capacity. Okay, what draft gears do is uh, they return the uh, coupler after each connection. And they also provide uh, cushioning to prevent the car damage and the uh, lading damage. These are the yokes that the uh, draft gear fits in. This is actually a Y45 yoke. Um, it's different types of couplers. I'm going to go over couplers here one of these days. This right here is a type F coupler. See, it has the round hole for a big pin. Pin goes in the yoke there. This is a uh, type E coupler. It has a draft key that goes in there. I don't have any Y40 uh, yokes that go with those type E couplers. But, um, this is the draft key that goes through there. That uh, Y40 yoke would actually have a uh, slot right in here cut. It wouldn't have this. It would have a slot in here for that draft key to go through that coupler. You know, do another video on the coupler sometime. It's uh, uh, Westinghouse also makes a Mark 500 R500 which uses a uh, solid rubber tube inside the springs and they make a Mark H60 it's a hydraulic unit with a spring here's how the draft gear fits in that yoke that's a new one that's going to go on the end of this car down here and then uh, right in there there's a a steel follower plate that goes in. Of course, then your coupler is connected to that. That whole assembly fits in there, and it's held up, held up in place with uh, those plates. And then huck bolted to the frame. The frame running back through there is called a sill. And this is a, a sill pocket. That's what it uh, goes into. And um, if you can see in here, this is the called a striker casting. Probably can't see that very well. Take you over here and show you the uh, follower plates 
what they look like. That's a fall over plate right there. We got all kind of parts here for cars, but that uh, one I showed you in the yoke with the chain around it—that's it's going to go in here. Okay, um, several different companies make draft gears besides uh, Westinghouse, which is uh, no longer Westinghouse. It's called uh, Wabtech. <laughs> uh, Progress Rail makes draft gears and uh, Minor Enterprises and Amstead Rail. And I'm sure there's more. I just don't know all of them, but uh, something else I wanted to tell you about, um, the compressive forces, a minor enterprises has a really, really good animation on YouTube. It's called, how does a draft gear absorb rail car energy? And it's really, really good, shows you exactly how this all works. But the uh, compressive forces on the uh, coupler is called buff. So the coupler would be pushed backwards. A trainman say it's slack in or a coupler is bunched. And the tension where the draft gear is pulled out is called draft. And that's also called slack out. Okay. I think that's all I want to go over on graft gears today. And uh, thank you for watching. And I hope you have a good day.